Hey everyone, how you doing today? It's David. I'm here in my Beatles Corner. And today in this video, I'm going to take a quick look at one of my favorite Beatle albums. The Beatles Revolver album, which to me is a landmark, well-rounded, super great album. And I, we're, I want to take a look at some of the different pressings I have from around the world and give you some thoughts on them and what I feel is the best sounding version of this album. So Revolver was released August of 1966. In England, August 5th. Uh, here in the States, it was August 8th. But let's just say worldwide, August of 1966. <clears throat> and each country, of course, issued it on their own record labels. Some countries have better pressings and better sounding versions than others. Let's take a look at the variations I have and um, tell you what I think about those pressings. Okay, so first one, and I have these, I don't even know why I have them in this order, but first one I got is um, a German pressing on the Horzu Odeon label. Or is it Hozu? Hezu? Um, anyway, this is a 1969 blue label pressing. Um, Hozu was, or is, or whatever. It's kind of like here in the States, we have the TV guide. Um, I think it, it translates into listen from the German. But um, these Beatle albums, from what I understand, were available through the magazine as a premium or mail order or something like that, um, which is why they're branded that way. But they're the standard Odeon pressings. Um, this one, it's cool to have because of the label variation. However, the master tapes, um, I don't know if they did anything in Germany to enhance the tapes, but there's, there are parts in some of the songs where the tape kind of drops a little bit in the sound quality. Um, it's nice to have. Otherwise, it's a clean version, but there's real no depth of, uh, of sound quality. But then again, you know, back in the 60s, they're issuing Beatles albums because they know... The music is fresh and new, and people weren't nitpicky back then like maybe they are now with audiophile quality. But that was to change. <laughs> so this is actually my least favorite sounding pressing of this album. Um, but like I said, that was about to change because in the 70s in Germany... Um, this version was issued in Germany on the Apple label. So there it is. And I did an um, unboxing video for this um, recently. <laughs> but um, this is, now I see on the front cover, it says Apple in a little uh, rectangular box. Um, otherwise, it is the same. Uh, you will notice, now let me go back to the Hozu. This is catalog number SHZE186. That is a standard um, 1960s Germany catalog number. The variation you want to look for, um, first off, you want to see that little rectangle apple right there. And the, um, there we go, uh, 1C072-094 or a 04097 catalog number. It has an updated catalog number. This is a updated pressing, um, different ma matrix numbers than the first one, the Horizu one. This one is noted and regarded for killer bass. The sound quality is awesome. They re-engineered, they must have gotten new, uh, new copies of the master tapes and they just cranked it up. Um, in a really good way. It's so balanced. I love that bass sound in, in the music. Um, and this one really delivers. This is a coveted 
pressing of this album. So if you happen to see it on eBay, if you're out in the wild at a record store and you happen to see it, I found, I had a copy of this a few years ago. I found it at a thrift store in Idaho and uh, stupidly got rid of it. And then I picked up the, the blue label Horizu thinking I was getting the same pressing. I wasn't. This is my favorite pressing of this album. <clears throat> um, and that's what I would recommend. Fa do. <laughs> um, next, we're going to go to Japan. And this is a 1970s, again, Apple label. Oh, there. There we go. Um, catalog numbers right there. AP8. 443 is right there. Um, this is another really nice, well-balanced. This has the OBI on it, as you can see, for the Apple Records variation. Um, there's the record. Nice. I like these international Apple labels because they're much more interesting to me than the American Apple labels. Um, so there you go. This This actually is another really nice, very clean sounding copy, more traditional as far as what the British um, variation sounds like. Um, in fact, it sounded so good, I got rid of my British Parlophone pressing some time ago, which I shouldn't have done. That one was from the 80s. This is from the 70s. It sounds really good. Um, in my opinion, if you're going to get something that's going to sound the cleanest and most closest to what it should sound like, it would be this, um, a Japanese Apple label copy. Um, I don't know what earlier or later copies from Japan, but the Jap Japan pressings are highly regarded. From what I've read, um, a red vinyl Odeon a label copy from 1966 would be a first pressing and would be probably the primo Japanese pressing to get. Now we're coming to my home country of the United States. And I'll probably do a video. I know I'm going to do a video on the American version of Revolver. Um, three, first off, three songs are left off, which would be... Um, I'm Only Sleeping, Andrew Bird Can Sing, and what was the third one? <laughs> I can't, I, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank, but, oh, the George Harrison song, which would be, let me go here, if, uh, Dr. Ro no, not the George Harrison one, Dr. Robert. <laughs> oh, why am I, I'm drawing a blank on that. That's not like me. Because those three songs were pulled from Revolver and put onto the compilation album Yesterday and Today. So here in America, we got those three songs early. Um, and there are different mixes of those songs, but I'm going to talk about that in a video I'm going to do for Yesterday and Today. Um, I have a first press monophonic copy right here, which sounds really good. Um... If you can't get something we're going to look at later, if you can't get a British or international monophonic copy, um, these this does fill the bill pretty nicely. Essentially, if you can find a mono copy of the American Revolver and a mono copy of the American Yesterday and Today, essentially you will have a British mono revolver chopped between two albums. It sounds really good. Um, hate to say this, but because it is an Amer the American version, which is a truncated version, um, it's kind of, it's nice to have, but you know, sound quality is good. Um, but we'll leave it at that. <laughs> this one, okay, is a second pressing stereo American copy. Again, it sounds good, but the American copies are truncated, so I, and then this is a orange label 1970s American copy. Again, it sounds really good, but it's 
a truncated version. <clears throat> um, but so those those sound good. Now the next one I have is <laughs> the 2014 mono um, reissue. To me, sounds phenomenal. Uh, the good news is I paid twenty five dollars for it at a record store a few years ago in Pennsylvania. The bad news is if you try to get a copy today, you're going $150, $200. Um, and I did open it to enjoy it. So, um, you know, one of these days I got to open my mono white album. <laughs> but this is a really nice, clean um, reissue. There's the label right there. And uh, I really like it. Um, from what I've un what I understand, it's not an exact like original mix mono. They did some tweaking, but um, I really I, I think it's a really great sounding. If you find if you want a good clean monophonic copy, I would recommend this. But really, probably any of the international when I say international German, Japanese, British mono copies would uh would be nice and probably more affordable and lastly i got this some time ago the 2012 stereo remaster that was off of the 2009 um digital <laughs> the cds so um and for this um i would want to say just get the cd but if you want it on vinyl and you just want a nice, clean, balanced, well-sounding version. Um, it's not. It's nice. I like it. I enjoyed it more than I did um, than I thought I would. But it is a nice, clean copy of the album. Um, in my opinion, for the for um, a good listening experience, it's either going to be this one for stereo or that Japanese one. But my absolute favorite of the bunch would be the <laughs> this German apple pressing because it's got that loud killer bass on it. Um, so those are my copies of Revolver from around the world. Just some thoughts on each one of them. And um, what it boils down to is you can still get this the 2012 Revolver you might still be able to get it at your local Walmart. I've seen it there or order online for about 25 bucks. Um, and that's a good value if you want it on vinyl. Um, again, if you want something that's like the, I don't know how to say it, the virgin listening experience, how it was meant in the 60s, the Japanese version is really good. Or if you want that killer bass, get that German apple one from the 70s. The one I would stay away from is the Horzu because it is flat um, sounding. It's not very exciting sounding. Um, it does have a dropout or two and not completely dropout, but a little muffling in spots. Doesn't sound good, but it's nice to have, if you see it, just to have it in your collection you know, get it, but you're not going to get a good listening experience. So there you have it. Um, again, my revolver collection and, um, we'll see you next time. Happy collecting and just be smart about what you buy. All right. We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Collecting Beatles 101. And if you are into bourbon reviews, please check out my other YouTube channel at my whiskey den. Thanks for watching.